establish easy. Hi, I want to talk about a coding interview question called, is this a binary search tree? So remember, a binary search tree is a binary tree, which is a search tree, which means that for every node, whatever value it is, everything to the left of it, that is less than or equal to that node, and everything to the right is bigger than or equal to that node. So I have two binary trees here, this one in red and this one in blue. They are exactly the same, except this node 37 down here is replaced instead with 150 over here. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. So pause the video and try to figure out which of these binary trees is actually a binary search tree and whether or not both of them are or whether neither of them are. So the answer is that the left one is a binary search tree and the right one is not. Why is the right one not? Well, consider the 25 node, that's A-OK -okay because everything to the left of it is smaller than 25 and everything to the right of it is bigger than 25. The 100 node is where things get wonky, right? Because everything to the right of it is bigger than 100, so that's OK. But everything to the left of it is not smaller than or equal to 100 because of this node down here, which is 150. It's small. It is bigger than the 100, but it's supposed to be smaller. So now what we want to do is we want to be given a binary tree and we want to figure out whether it's a binary search tree. Okay, so we are given an arbitrary tree and we want to figure out whether it's a binary search tree. So let's code it up. Okay, so we got a little function right here that I'm starting here called is BST. So is it a binary search tree? So we're going to return true if this thing is a binary search tree and false otherwise. And like a lot of algorithms involving binary trees, this is going to be recursive. So the two types of trees are that it's an empty tree or it's not an empty tree. <laughs> so if it's an empty tree, then clearly this is a binary search tree, right? There's, there's nothing there. There's no, nothing can, that can violate the binary search tree invariant. So suppose that the tree is not empty. Well, the thing is, think about that weird example that we had where we replaced that 37 with the 150 right here. Well, note that the 150 was okay with respect to the 25, but is not okay with respect to the, the grandparent of 150. So in effect, what we need to do, we need to filter down the limits of where the values can be. So let's say we are at this 100 right here. Whenever, if we're gonna look down the left side, then what we have to say is that the maximum that anything can be over here is 100. That's the maximum anything can be. And on the right side, the minimum that anything can be is 100 because it's on the right side here. So let's look at those two cases. So if the root is empty, then we need to return true. Okay, so then now we need some way of filtering down the information about the root's actual value. The problem is that this function right here is just taking a binary tree, but it's not taking any parameters about like what is the lowest value that can appear on this side, what is the, the biggest value that can appear on this side. So what we need to do is either we augment this function to take two additional parameters that involve the maximum and the minimum that any node on this tree can be, or what we need to do is to have this function call a different function. And that's what we're gonna do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this code down and I'm going to, I'm gonna immediately call or at least just return is BST help of root. And this is gonna take three parameters, the tree itself, but also the minimum and the maximum. So I'm going to have the second parameter be the absolute minimum that any node can be. And I'm just going to represent that with negative infinity. And you can use like int min or whatever data type that you're actually using. But this is just a demonstration of what we're trying to do. The absolute minimum value goes here and the absolute maximum value goes there. So I'm going to represent that with a better drawn, I should say, positive infinity. Okay, so that is the call here. So then now when we're going to define the function, so def is BST helper, we need to have the roots, the min, and the max. 
So in this tree, this where this root actually is, we need to return true if every node in this part of the tree is between min and max. So it's the generalized version of the problem, which is nice in mathematics and computer science. We generalize problems in order to make certain problems easier to solve. This is a general problem that takes an arbitrary min and an arbitrary max and helps us solve a particular problem where the min happens to be negative infinity and the max is positive infinity. Okay, so then now let's focus on this case. So if the root is empty, then we're gonna return true because there's no nodes to violate the constraints, so that's perfectly fine. Well, what we need to do is to look at the particular root's value. And if it's lower than the min or bigger than the max, then we're toast, obviously. Okay, so then if the root's value, I'm gonna represent that with root.value is less than the min, or it's the case that the root value is bigger than the max, then we need to return false. And so that handles the case of where we're looking at this particular node. So let's look at this example. So right here at this 100, we're going to call is BST with a this node right here 100. So we're going to call is BST help with 100 and negative infinity and positive infinity. So then when we get into is BST helper, root is now this 100 at the top and min is negative infinity, max is positive infinity. The root's not empty, so we're gonna skip that. If the root value, which is 100, is less than negative infinity, which is not true, or the 100 is bigger than positive infinity, which is also not true, so we're not gonna return false here. So this one node is totally okay at the moment. Okay, so then now what we need to do is to filter down the 100 to the left side to have it be the maximum, and the 100 to be the minimum value on the right side. So then now, and what we need to do is to make sure that both sides are okay. So it has to be that the left side is okay and the right side is okay. So all that we need to do then is to return is BST helper with roots left child. So root dot left. And what is the minimum value that can appear? Well the min is gonna be the same because we're looking on the left side here. So I'm still gonna pass in min here, but the maximum is gonna be roots value. So that's one of the recursive calls. And in purple, I'm gonna do the other one. So I'm gonna do and is BST helper with roots dot right here because that is the new root of that part of the tree. So if the, we look at the 100 here, the, the root on the left side is gonna be the 25 and the root on the right is gonna be the 150. So then now here, what is the min and max on this side? Well, the maximum isn't gonna change because we're on the right side now, but the minimum's gonna change, it's gonna be this guy's value. So now we're gonna have root value as being the second parameter here, and then we're gonna still pass max in. And we're guaranteed that this works because here, we're guaranteed that root's value is in between min and max in order to get to this return statement at the end. Okay, so let's actually trace through it on this tree and hopefully we return false because of this 150. So the 100 was okay on both of these. So we're gonna return the result of these two recursive calls. So let's look at the recursive calls. So effectively we're seeing if this purple tree is okay and we're also gonna see if this pink tree over here is okay. So let's look at the purple tree, which is where the problem is. So here, we're gonna have 25 here. Is 25 between the minimum, which is still negative infinity, and max, which is now 100? It's okay, so that's good. And it's not empty, so that, that's fine. So then now we're gonna return the recursive calls on both sides. So we're, now we're gonna look at these two subtrees, even though they have exactly one node in them, which is totally fine. So then here, let's look at the green tree. The green tree, well, its max now is 25 because we passed the roots value down here because it went left. Is 12 in between negative infinity and 25? It sure dang is. So this tree is okay. And then we're gonna call the two recursive functions on 12, but it has no children. So the this if statement right here is going to be encountered in both of the children's cases right here 
So the 12 is A-OK. -okay. But now let's look at the 150. Since it was a right child, that means that the 25 was passed as a min and 100 is still filtered down as a max. So the 150 here is going to return false because it's not between 25 and 100. So this blue tree is not okay. So that means that the purple tree is not okay because the return statement right here is asking if both trees are both okay. And clearly the blue tree is not okay, so the purple tree is not okay. And so therefore the whole tree is not okay because again, it required that both sides of the tree be okay and the left one is not okay. So notice that if something fails, we're filtering it up to the top and then we can get the result as at the very end, which is kind of cool. So what is the runtime of this thing? Well, notice what happens. Well, isBST's runtime is clearly the same as isBST helps runtime because it's just calling the function. So here, let's see. Well, this takes a constant amount of work to do. This takes a constant amount of work to do. So the real runtime of the algorithm is dominated by these two. But notice what happens here. When we go down one side, because it's a binary tree, we guarantee that we'll never see a node twice because we're going down one side. Whatever the result is over here, these nodes on the left are not going to appear on the right. And so therefore, I'm only going to see every node exactly once, but less precisely, it's a constant number of times, which is A-OK -okay for our purposes. So every node is encountered a constant number of times. So if there are n nodes, that means that the overall runtime is big O of n because it's a constant number of times. And so therefore, this is a linear time algorithm to figure out whether a tree, a binary tree, is actually a binary search tree. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about binary search trees down into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.